All right, people, this is a quick post fight video covering the Bellew Hay undercard. So I'm going to be covering Joshua Boatzi's fight against Stefan Cuevas, Joe Joyce's fight with Lemroy Thomas, and John Ryder's fight with Jamie Cox. First of all, Joshua Boatzi's performance over Cuevas. Now, this fight ended, what round did it end there? In the fifth. Boatsy, obviously a very well-schooled fighter, bronze medalist at the Olympics. He never throws anything wild. Very methodical with his approach, breaks you down gradually. He's got good power, but not spectacular power from what I've seen so far. He's got decent speed, but he's not a guy you would regard as necessarily fast. He's just a very well-schooled, good all-round prospect. And... There seems to be physical strength there as well. He does get hit a little bit, which, you know, he's going to have to watch as he moves up in competition, particularly in a light heavyweight division because the division is stacked full of beasts, you know? So they're going to have to pump the brakes a little bit on Boatsy, I think, before they move him up. If the division wasn't so strong, I think they could move Boatsy more quickly, but because it's such a strong division, they've got to be very, very careful. Uh, but still... He did a good job here, methodically broke down his opponent, whose name <laughs> I've forgotten again already. What was his name? Cuevas. Stefan Cuevas methodically broke him down. I like the finish. Boatsy has a strange idiosyncrasy where he touches his the bottom of his boxing boot. While he's in mid-flow fighting, he'll put his right hand down and touch the bottom of his boxing boot <laughs> and then come back up and hit his opponent, a strange idiosyncrasy. Maybe it's showboating, I don't know. Uh, but he did it right here uh, in the middle of the finish. He caught the guy with a right hand, went in, and it was a really nice finish, actually. He opened up on him, and it was a nice in injection of speed from Joshua Boatsy. And, you know, this is a personal thing. It's not even a criticism. This is just a personal preference. I personally prefer watching fighters who are explosive. Boatsy... I wouldn't describe him as explosive. I'd describe him as more methodical than explosive. So as much as I think he's a good talent, just from an entertainment standpoint, I'm not massively entertained by watching him. Yeah, it's not to say he isn't good. That's not to say he isn't well-schooled, etc. It's just a personal preference. I prefer a more explosive fighter. A fighter like a George Groves, right? Who's sudden. The punches come out explosively and fast out of nowhere. Even a Deontay Wilder. This, these are explosive guys. I prefer guys like that as opposed to someone like a Golovkin who's more methodical with what he does. He's not really explosive. Very heavy-handed, but not explosive. Mike Tyson, for example, is explosive. You know, he's probably explosive one-on-one. You know, if you look up explosive in a boxing dictionary, you're going to see a picture of Mike Tyson. <laughs> so, yeah, Boatsy did good. Nice finish. He dispatched of... His opponent, uh, Stefan Cuevas, in the fifth. So moving on to Joe Joyce's performance against Lemroy Thomas. Joyce stops Thomas in the second round and becomes the, well, he's the quickest guy to ever win the Commonwealth heavyweight title, basically. He won it in, what was it, his fourth fight? Nobody's ever won it that quickly before. Um, I saw Joyce interviewed right before the ring walks and Joyce looked as calm and as relaxed as you could possibly be before going out to fight somebody. I mean, he was just, he looked so casual and so calm. Then they went to the dressing room of Lemroy Thomas and Lemroy Thomas looked noticeably, not, not just nervous. He looked shaken. <laughs> he looked shook to bits. Lemroy Thomas, which Surprised me because he's such an experienced fighter. But he looked shook to bits. You know, he, he could barely speak when the interviewer was asking him the questions. And I thought then that, you know, <laughs> it might not last too long with a guy that nervous. However, that nervous energy manifested itself in the first few seconds of the fight against Joe Joyce in sharpness. Yeah, he was very jittery, Lemroy Thomas moving around, but he did land the first significant blow of the fight, which was a straight left hand down the pipe, which caught Joe Joyce 
bang in the face. <laughs> and it kind of angered Joel Joyce, actually, because he really went after Lemroy Thomas after that. Joyce reverted back to his typical style because we saw him against Donny Palmer trying to imitate almost like a David Hay type style. Whereas here against uh, Lemroy Thomas, it was the typical Joel Joyce that we know from the amateurs, from the Olympics, where he just swarms forward and throws relentless pressure, relentless work rate at you. And for a guy as big as he is, as physically strong as he is, to be throwing as relentlessly as he does, it's going to be difficult to deal with. It is very ugly. People keep saying, yeah, but Joe Joyce is slow and his style is ugly. Yes, it is. He is slow. It is ugly. It does look amateurish. But the results speak for themselves. I don't understand how he does it. Because <laughs> he just looks so amateurish. But as an amateur, he won international senior titles at the very, very highest level. Even in the World Series of Boxing, he beat some very good fighters in the World Series of Boxing. There's one guy in particular whose name escapes me, who is, I think he's from Kazakhstan, a heavyweight. He's like 6'5", he's a young undefeated guy. Joe Joyce beat him in the World Series of Boxing. You know, uh, Joe Joyce had a very, very good amateur resume and a, a, a pretty good record in the World Series of Boxing. And he was beating guys who looked way more polished than him. Guys who were faster than he was, slicker than he was. Somehow he was just overwhelming them with work rate. And <laughs> I don't know how Joe Joyce does it because it looks like it shouldn't work, but somehow it does work. That's all I can tell you. And it worked against Lembroy Thomas. Thomas looked like he was <laughs> scared to death in there. Joyce was all over him like a cheap suit. And it was only a matter of time. That nervousness that Lemro Thomas came out with helped him to be sharp initially, but he quickly got drained as soon as he started getting started getting hit with shots. And sometimes when you come out and you're nervous like that, you burn up energy too quickly. Even though it makes you sharp early, you're burning up energy. And Lemro Thomas was burning up energy. And yeah, he took some big shots from Joe Joyce in the first round, in the second round even more. He was down, I think, a couple of times. And in the end, that's all she wrote. So yeah, Joe Joyce did get caught. He didn't look very sophisticated. He looked clunky. He looked slow, <laughs> but he got the job done, right? I mean, Dave Allen went, what, 10 rounds with a guy the first time around, or was it 12 rounds? Whatever, whatever it was, the first fight. And Joe Joyce took him out in two rounds. So that just shows you the gulf in class between Joe Joyce and someone like Dave Allen. You know, they're worlds apart. And as I say, it, it, Joe Joyce, his style looks like it shouldn't work, but somehow it does. We can't ignore the results that he's been getting from amateur at top level. And now as a professional, he's won the Commonwealth heavyweight title in the quickest time in history. For whatever that's worth. Anyway, moving on to the final fight I'm going to be talking about on the undercard, which was Jamie Cox versus John Ryder. Now, I saw this as a good 50-50 fight going in. I was not sure who to pick, but in the end, I went with Jamie Cox. I thought Jamie Cox's tenacity might be able to overcome John Ryder's superior boxing ability. Because there's no question that John Ryder was the superior boxer going into this fight. Far more polished, better technique, better defense. There was no question in my mind John Ryder was the better technical fighter, the more talented fighter. But I'd seen John Ryder capitulate several times before. I'd seen John Ryder against Nick Blackwell. He was lighting Nick Blackwell up like a Christmas tree in that fight. And somehow he ended up getting stopped. It's like, how the hell did that happen? When you, when you see the first round of Ryder against Blackwell, you're thinking there's no way John Ryder can lose this fight. <laughs> but he did lose it. And there was a couple of other fights which Ryder, I don't think, lost. Did he lose? I can't remember now. But still, there were several other fights that Ryder had where he could have won or could have won more conclusively, but he just held back. He just didn't seem to have the determination and the drive to go that extra mile, you know, and snatch victory. 
just didn't seem to have it. So with John Ryder, my reservations about him were never anything to do with his talent. It was to do with his mindset. And that's why I ended up, you know, marginally edging towards Jamie Cox winning this fight. But actually the fight turned out to be a mismatch, you know. Uh, <laughs> Jamie Cox was struggling with the southpaw stance of Ryder. They were both southpaws, but John Ryder being the more naturally talented guy adjusted far quicker to fighting another southpaw. And he was landing nice shots on the inside from the first round. And in the second round, he caught Jamie Cox coming in. Cox was aggressive as ever, but he caught Jamie Cox coming in with, I think it was a right hook to the side of Jamie Cox's head, high on the side of his head, almost on the forehead. And Cox's back leg betrayed him. It just was swept from underneath him. And in a delayed reaction, he crumbled to the canvas and he was clearly hurt. Even when he got to one knee, you could see that he was unsteady and he tried to time the count so that he'd get up at a count of nine, but he mistimed it and the referee counted him out. I don't think Cox has got anything to complain about. Uh, there are some people suggesting Jamie Cox quit. I don't think he quit. I think he was badly hurt, you know, and when you're badly hurt, you try and get every second that you can when you're down like that. So I don't think Jamie Cox quit at all. I just think he got hit with a shot that totally scrambled his senses and he didn't quite know where he was. Um, and it's interesting because George Groves hit Jamie Cox with a lot of clean head punches, but he never really seriously hurt Cox like that with head punches. Whereas John Ryder did, you know, Jamie Cox was stopped by George Groves from a body shot. He never went down from any head shots from George Groves, but here one right hook from John Ryder and Jamie Cox is on the canvas. Does John Ryder hit harder than advertised? Or was it just one of those kind of freak shots that catch you in the right place on the head, like near the temple and scrambles your senses. And normally if the shot had hit you on the chin or anywhere else on the, on the head, you would have taken it a lot better. I don't know. You guys let me know what you think. Does Ryder hit harder than advertised or was it just one of them freak shots? Maybe a bit of both. You let me know what you think, but I personally felt like it was a really good performance by John Ryder. Again, I don't think anybody would have been telling you that he wasn't the more talented and technically superior fighter going in. But it's just, maybe his heart has been in question. Maybe that's all it is. His heart or, his, or maybe not his heart, maybe his confidence level has been in question previously. And interestingly enough, in the post-fight interview, John Ryder said that when he knocked Jamie Cox down, he saw Cox on the floor and in his head, he was thinking, please don't get up. <laughs> and again that kind of that kind of doesn't fill me with the most confidence in John Ryder going forward because it was only early in the fight and remember he was lighting up Nick Blackwell early in their fight so to be looking at a guy when he's down saying please don't get up maybe I'm reading too much into it but sometimes when fighters knock somebody down and the guy goes down the fighter who scored the knockdown is saying please get up I want to finish you off you know, I'm, I'm a blood man. I want to finish you off. Get up. Whereas John Ryder was thinking the opposite. He was like, no, stay down. <laughs> like, I know Jamie Cox is a handful. I want you to stay down, bro. <laughs> I don't want you to get back up and get back into this fight. Stay down. So, yeah. Anyway, good win for John Ryder. You got to feel happy for him. He's putting together some nice performances now. And maybe he's finally got himself together mentally. Maybe there was some kind of issue mentally before. Maybe there was some kind of issue with the way he was training. I don't know. But he seems to be getting it together now and having an Indian summer in his career. So let's see if John Ryder can get a world title shot, maybe get some nice paydays before he calls it quits in the sport of boxing. We'll see. But yeah, good win for John Ryder. Liked his performance. I've always liked John, watching John Ryder, actually, because he's so nice technically. You know, he's got such a nice style to watch throws nice punches, picks nice shots. I just remember watching that Blackwell fight and thinking like, Ryder's got skills, man. Like, you know, he's, he is a skilled boxer. He's so talented. And to see him fall apart the way he did against Blackwell was just so disappointing to me. You know, I, watching them first couple rounds, I was thinking there's no way he could lose this fight. And yet he did. <laughs> Bizarre. Anyway, let me know how you felt about 
these three undercard fights. And yeah, let me know what you felt about my assessment of them. Drop it all in the comment section below. It's Hatman, I'm out.